In Sangra Grande, the name Hardath is widely known because of Hardath General Insurance Consultants Limited. Many residents are also familiar with Mr. Hario Hardath himself. He is well known for his contributions in the Nariva community, having served as Secretary of the Bish Village Council, as well as Secretary of the Regional Committee of Village Councils. Mr. Hardath has been involved in many other organizations in the Sangre Grande area before entering into politics. The People's National Movement recognized his ability to mobilize the people of Nariva and his humble dedication and passion. They saw Mr. Hardath's power and ability to get things done. I used to write to the ministers and the prime minister to get things done in the area where I lived before, the beach. So when the PNM party group in beach saw, saw me doing so many things and getting things done for the area, while they were a party, a party group in the, in the area of beach and uh, belonged to the ruling party and they couldn't get things done, they came to me and asked me to join the PNM party group in Bish. I hesitated for a little while because I didn't want to venture into politics. But I was persuaded by some of my friends who were members of the party group in Bish. And finally I joined the PNM in 19, 1967. And I held many, many positions in the party group and also the constituency executive of, of Nariva. When nomination time came in 1971, people from Mr. Hardat's hometown in Bish asked him to run for candidacy with the PNM. This was the start of his career as an MP. Nariva was a very downtrodden constituency. People didn't have employment, didn't have projects like Dude and URP and things those days. And I used to get projects in my constituency where people were provided with employment to gain a livelihood, and they were quite happy about that. And if anyone goes around to my constituency, they'll see a lot of monuments standing in my name because I got those things done. From the Ministry of Work, I got many footwork projects in every district in the constituency. A lot of drainage gangs to take care of the drains and rivers and the, and the agricultural holdings and the, for the farmers, cleaning the drains and rivers and so on. But one of the issues that um, I didn't get through but it was on the development program to be done during my time was three secondary schools, one for the Beach area, Beach High School, Manzalina High School, and Ray Claro High School, and some other elementary schools in the area. But they were built, they were built. Some were built during my time and some were built, even though I was not there, but um, as it was on the development program, when the new government came to power, they built it. The ministers who were my colleagues in those times, the 15 years I served in the parliament, they used to help me quite a lot. I used to tell them, you know, if you want to see how people are suffering and, and if you want to see how the, the amenities that people need in the area, you have to get out from behind your desk and go with the MPs. And I used to invite, invite them to my constituency and carry them around district to district to see what the people require. And when they, go, when they went around with me, then they realized some of the diff difficulties and hardship people are suffering. And, it's, and when they saw that, and due to my memorandums, every six months, where I used to write to every minister and the permanent secretary in every ministry, they were able to have these projects programmed and they, were, they appeared in the development program. They were included in the development program year after year. And that is how I get a lot of things done the constituency of Nariva. In speaking with a few of his colleagues, anyone would understand that Mr. Hardat's disposition played a major role in his success as an MP. Well, he's a very pleasant person. I found him so anyway. Pleasant, easy to get along with. I interacted with him in Parliament, of course, but I also interacted with him in his constituency. Because as Minister of National Security, from time to time, I'd have to visit areas that he represented, sometimes at his request, sometimes otherwise. More than that, I had a very close friendship with the Minister of Works and Transport during that period. And there were many projects which uh, the government completed in that constituency. 
road projects, police station projects, school projects. As a matter of fact, from time to time, our party would have general council meetings in, the, in that area, which would give us another opportunity to interact with him because he was a perfect host. Whenever we met in his constituency, he's always very kind and hospitable to us all. The ministers had liked him because he was a nice fellow. And they all went out of their way to try and help him. And I'm pleased to say that he, uh, he deserved getting that attention. He had it cool. Because everybody liked him. You see, when you are an offensive fellow, people quarrel. But in his case, he, he was nice to people. And the people, they returned that niceness with their kindness to him. And they really helped him. I tell you, they really, really helped him. He was a good man, and he got the, the ret returns for it. How do you how that was a rather quiet, unassuming, reticent sort of person? Um, pleasant, um, easy to get along with, and um, therefore, you know, one had a very pleasant, cordial, even tempered relationship with him. Hardu Hardath understood that his community deserved a more comfortable standard of living, and he sought this for the people. I think. Um, one of the main driving force for him would have been the fact that um, the committee that he served, the constituents that he, ser that he served, uh, might have been a bit neglected prior to him being involved in politics. And you know, him getting involved in it was, was, was able to get uh, the basic things for the community, roads, water, lighting, schooling, um, health centers, you know, things like that. And um, he did as much as, as he could have done uh, in, 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 in the time frame. The Kunapu Southern Road was repaved, and that road was not repaved for years. It was in a deplorable condition, and he was able to get it done. That's one of the first things that he got done, at least to, 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 to give some um, relief to the motoring public at that time. Getting community centers, health centers, you know, schools, you know, he was able to, 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 to put forward um, recommendations and got schools built for the area, etc. So in terms of that sort of development, you know, he, um, he focused on those things. We put down um, a water treatment plant and three and three three um five hundred thousand gallon water tank with booster pumps to pump water to the length and breadth of San Diego and the and environs like like Maraj Hill and all them all the places in the Guayco terminal area in San Diego and also. So that was a very good thing that we have done myself and Mr. L. M. Robinson for the people of San Diego and the Outside of his community, Mr. Hardat represented Trinidad and Tobago at international conferences, including the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conference in Malaysia in 1971, and in London he served as a delegate to Trinidad and Tobago at another such conference in 1982. I interacted with many, many politicians from prime ministers and ministers from parliament, from parliament in other countries. It was a great experience for me. I learned a lot from those people. I intermingled with them for almost one month. We were together in a, one of the largest hotels in Malaysia. So that helped me a lot when I came back. I came with Vega, a lot of more enthusiasm to work in my constituency. Mr. Hardat seconded the National Insurance Bill brought forward by Errol Mahabir. He also made his contributions in other related debates, including budget debates. When I was first elected in 1971 and I went to Parliament, I was asked by the leader of the House, Mr. Kamaluddin Mohammed, to second the throne speech, which was read by Sir, um, Sir Solomon Huchai, who was the, the Governor General at that time. And then I contributed in, in debate and every budget, every budget debate. I had to take part in every early budget debate. Where I, where I had the opportunity of putting in a plug for my constituency, asking for many amenities and so on. He was a complete um, constituency representative, and that is essentially where his strength lay. You would not have found him making um, speeches that captured you know, the public's imagination, but in a more subdued way, he was perhaps even more effective than those whose voices you tended to hear all the time. Hadeo Hadath heard the voices of his constituency members. He toured the area regularly, meeting with the people of Nariva, assessing their needs. 
Members of Parliament did not always have the facilities that are available today to assist in comfortably carrying out their duties. Mr. Hardat's son Carl recalls these times. In those days, there were no office provided for MPs. And being his son, being his, his probably his eldest son, I had reasons to be in the office while you know he would have worked in the office. And I would have seen him, you know, spending quite some time dealing with people's business. There was one thing that stood out to me as a child, and being so young, um, in his first term of politics, um, probably I would have been like about four or five, somewhere around there. I remembered he did something for someone. I, I can't recall the details of it. And this person uh, was from Beach, we lived in Santa Grande. And this person bought um, some chickens in a box, you know, and it was, it was marveling to us to know that this, this person would have bought these chickens and presented it to him as a token of appreciation. And, you know, and um, after the person left, you know, um, um, subsequently we were chatting as a family, you know, saying that this, this was not necessary, you know, it was, um, he did it out of the love of doing it. Mr. Haddad's family coped as best as they could, understanding his desire to serve. First, when I met my husband, he was a very young, handsome man up till now. He was a very caring person, a very caring man. He loved his family. He do his duties. We always remain the same way, and I never had any problem with him. Hard-working person, understanding. There, there couldn't be a person more humble than him in terms of his upbringing, the way he dealt with his children, his friends, his family, and everybody that he encountered in his life. He was a truly what you call a grassroots person, a simple person, humble person. There's no way else to describe him. The, the constituency was the largest in Trinidad. And we had to go there and tour the area with him to see roads, to see drains, to look at facilities for the farmers, to uh, give electricity, to su so water supply was a big problem we used to visit so he succeeded in nearly everything he made representation for the ministers had liked him because he was a nice fellow he was elected on three occasions in the same constituency that's a bit of a record i'm sure not too many people can boast about that to the extent therefore that this is so it must be that he serviced his constituency well that I can vouch for because he would also always be in the offices of the various ministries ensuring that his constituency is well served, whatever the problems might have been. Today, Mr. Hardak is plowing his time into the insurance business with the assistance of his family. The schools, community centers, and other basic amenities now enjoyed in Sangre Grande are a testament to Hario Hardak's extensive work as a member of parliament.